Thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, my name is Duff Ferguson, a partner and founder here at Amplitude Digital. And we're here to talk today about core web vitals and you. And uh, this is part of an ongoing series we have of webinars where we hit important topics that uh, all of our clients really are, are asking a lot of questions about and just try to give you the best information we can to give you an opportunity to ask some questions. So let me take you quickly uh, through what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, but before I do, I always just like to show this slide because this reminds us of where we were and where we will be again soon, which is having fun together, doing digital marketing physically in the same place. Um, we have fun together, we enjoy doing this work and I are looking forward to being back in person again soon uh, with everyone. Here's our agenda for today. Um, Going to introduce who we have here with us from Amplitude today, take you through just an introduction of what Core Web Vitals are, talk about some of how, how, what sort of tests we can do, what are some of the issues, and how they might be fixed, and in general, how much is the worry level on this? Uh, is it high uh, emergency level or something that is something could be dealt with over a period of time? We'll delve into that, give us some final thoughts, and then we'll have a chance for everyone to ask and uh, we'll answer any questions that you have. On the call with us today here, I uh, have with me, it looks different, but on my left, that might be different for you, Jeff Ferguson. He's the uh, also a partner, head of production here at Amplitude, and he heads up all the production, all of our work for all of our clients. And uh, also with me on my other side is Ludwig Machian, who uh, is one of our most senior SEO experts here at Amplitude. And uh, there's plenty to share today that you're going to find interesting. And again, you already know me, I'm Duff. So with that, Jeff, I will pass it over to you. And uh, let's get into it. So uh, thank you for that great introduction, Duff. Um, and uh, welcome all uh, that came to this one. As Duff mentioned, this is uh, just kind of an ongoing series. We do this from time to time um, to really make sure that, that um, you know, sometimes it's from questions from the field that we decide to cover a certain topic. Uh, so if you end up uh, having anything that you feel like, hey, this would be really good to kind of handle, feel free to let us know and, and uh, we uh, might make that a highlighted piece. Um, sometimes like this one, it's something that we feel like the world really needs to know. Um, it, you know it's one of those things where, um, you know, we may not be doing SEO work for you as a client uh, in this moment, uh, but it's something just the same that um, we, you know, we don't necessarily need to be stingy with information on this one and just do it to people that are uh, paying for some information. This is, uh, it happens to be a very important one uh, that can really um, affect uh, your organic search results, but it can affect um, your website on many different fronts as well. So we feel it's, it's useful to really kind of get into this information going forward. So uh, let's dive into it, shall we? All right. So what are core web vitals, right? Uh, this gets a little geeky here, but hold on. We'll, we'll try and, uh, you know, uh, tame it um, as much as we can as we go along here. Uh, some of these names are kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have called these things these things. But uh, this is kind of what we have to kind of live with here or whatever. Um, so one of the big ones you'll hear is first uh, contentful paint. Uh, or FCP shows up uh, on a, a lot of the uh, tools and things like as well. And basically, this is this is one of the many time metrics, time-based metrics that we're looking at. And it's really how long it takes for the first image or text to be uh, painted on a user's screen. Uh, painted in this case means, um, you know, like appear on your screen, uh, whether it be on your phone or your or tablet um, or on a desktop or whatever it is kind of stuff within the browser itself, how quickly do these things appear? And as you can imagine, uh, this is an important metric in the sense that um, if you're a user and you're coming to a website for the first time and you don't see anything right away, your first impulse is to think that something's broken, right? It's just, it's just the way it works. That's the way people's mind works. They're going to go, oh, no, like something's wrong. It's not loading, whatever it is kind of stuff. It's too slow. Um, I don't have time for this kind of stuff. So this is one of the reasons why Google really likes to pay attention to this. But this is why the, the, the world pays attention to this metric, because it's just something where it's kind of universal um, going forward that, that uh, um, people want this type of thing. Uh, speed index, another important one. Uh, this is kind of like the holdover from a, from something that Google's been paying attention to uh, for many years at this point. Um, and this speed index is basically just how fa fast content is displayed on the page. Um, it's a little bit different of a metric than the first contentful paint. Uh, in this case, it's really just like how it loads just overall. And um, like I said, it's been around for some time, but it's, it's something where how quickly does this entire page uh, kind of really load up? 
largest contiful paint um the kind of the the cousin to the first contiful paint here um is the time for your largest image or block of text to actually be painted and again this is kind of like just that secondary metric to basically see like hey once that first one's loaded how quickly does the rest show up um and it's all about experience i mean these are actually called experiential metrics when it comes right down to it and the idea is is that if something loads really quick and it takes forever for the second one to show up to it it's the same kind of deal where you know clients could be not clients uh, users could be wondering hey when's the rest of this going to show up um am i going to be waiting on these things i'm already finished reading this next segment where is it at that kind of stuff so you can imagine if you put yourself in the user show shoes this is why this is really important uh time to interactive i always thought this one's got a weird name time to interactive it should like be interactivity or something like that but uh time to interactive is is basically just what it sounds like how quickly before um you as a user can actually start interacting uh with the screen itself you know and that could be anything from uh, scrolling down the page uh being able to fill a form out um clicking on something any of those types of things how quickly does that become a possibility for your page and again this is to get around that idea that um you know people can load pages really quickly um, but they could just be sitting there and not being able to click on or move forward or whatever and that's just a bad user inter interface uh total blocking time um is the um it's kind of like the first metric measures in milliseconds of time and it's really uh, has an idea of it's a total between uh first contable paint and largest contable paint it's it's kind of a combination of few things and we'll have uh, ludwig get into a little bit more detail on that one a little bit later because it's it's kind of a weird description to it and then there's a cumulative layout shift, right? And this is an important one. Uh, and you've probably, if you've used the web for any length of time, uh, you've most likely encountered, um, you know, like this in action and why this is such an annoying thing and why Google's paying attention to it and why it's a good metric. And it's basically the, the measurement of the visible element changes within the user's viewpoint. So um, if you've ever used, um, you know, like one of the big news sites out there, you know, it could be USA Today or CNN or TMZ or whatever it is that are out there. And you've been on the page for any um, amount of time, whatever it is, and suddenly you see the content shift around and try and find its place again. Um, this is what's called known as a layout shift. And it happens a lot on websites that are advertising driven because they usually will do things where they're loading advertising while you're on the page. Um, while you're still reading things, whatever it is, and that shift. And sometimes if it's not set up properly, the content can be different sizes. Um, it could be that they are, they're moving from, um, you know, from a, uh, a graphic banner to, um, to video. It could be a variety of different reasons to it. Um, it could be that they're actually slotting in new ads uh, in between the content as you're kind of rolling around. Uh, these are all known as like layout shifts. And uh, if you're like me, you can't stand it. <laughs> I, I even write for a publication that does this and it drives me nuts. Uh, but some of my favorite places to read content on uh, i see this happen and uh when this became um you know metric that we knew about and something that i knew google was going to uh, uh, pay attention to uh we i started uh twittering them you know tweeting them immediately to kind of say hey look you're going to start getting penalized for this kind of stuff it's you know it's, it's gone beyond just being annoying to me uh google's going to tag you on it now so pay attention to it so um so as on all of these you'll you'll notice we've got some um some good averages some good time uh ranges for a lot of these things to it uh, um, based on, um, you know, different uh, tools and different testings and things like that you can actually do for that. Um, but speaking of testing, so uh, how can you actually test these things in general? How can you get these metrics that are associated with it? Uh, there's some other tools that are out there that are very easy to do. Uh, one, if you're kind of more on the advanced side, I would say uh, there's what's called Lighthouse, right? And this is, um, this is a feature that's actually built into Google Chrome. And um, you can actually choose to inspect uh, different pages, whatever it is that, within the Lighthouse tab. And you can see reports and get a bunch of other page vitals. It's a wealth of information, uh, especially if you were the, uh, the kind of the website designer or somebody that is in charge of just how uh, the page interacts and things like that. Like I said, a little bit more advanced on this side of it. So we just wanted to kind of lean that one early. Um, you know, it wasn't always called Lighthouse. These features have been built into um, you know, Chrome for some time. Uh, there is a web version of it out there that you can get to that's a, just a different approach. But Lighthouse is is kind of like the de facto, um, like best version of all this information you get to. But like I said, it's a bit advanced. 
Um, one of the other ones, and this one's actually been around for some time, but they've updated it when Core Web Vitals came out, is what's known as PageSpeed Insights. And uh, this is another one um, that is built into Chrome, but there's also um, a separate website that Google makes available uh, that lets you give your lab data, uh, which includes information on different vitals along these lines. And then um, the search console. So if you're, you know, if you've messed around in the SEO world at all, or you've had your website for whatever it is, there's there's the Google search console, and this is where there's a ton of information that usually relates to SEO and organic search and things like that. Uh, and when they introduced um, this uh, Core Web Vitals uh, kind of concept to the world, they included it in uh, the Google search console, so you can actually get that information too. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, that is probably the most pleasant presentation of this information. It's, it, uh, it comes up in a very nice looking dashboard that you can get to quite easy. Um, you can actually even see this change over time. Uh, you can see it by specific pages. There's a, a lot of different ways to do it. So it's a, it's a really nice way uh, to kind of get to it. So if you're picking one of them, um, just to be the one that maybe is keeping an eye on these types of things, I would go with Search Console. But uh, yeah, like I said, any of these things will, will actually work in that instance. So. Ludwig, did you have anything on this one? Any any uh, other you know deeper places? Anything else that uh, you've seen that is a good location for this type of information? Uh, no, I think one of them is also web.dev. It's a combination of Lighthouse as well. Mm -hmm. It's also a nice looking report, uh, easier to comprehend. I'm starting to see a lot of the uh, SEO tool providers um, have actually started to integrate this in as well. Um, I know we're uh, an SEM Rush uh, site, uh, you know, SEM shop, I guess is the best one, SEM Rush, and they've got a nice uh, little presentation of it as well that, that uses kind of the classic, uh, um, you know, red light, green light uh, kind of situation for, for that one, and it's kind of a nice way to do these things. And uh, so if you're one of our SEO clients, a lot of times you'll see that um, screenshot <laughs> presented back to you as a way to kind of get that information because it's, it's very nice, but uh, I'm sure the rest of them are all catching up to, to have one form or the other of this information available for you. All right, so moving on, let's talk a little bit more about uh, what these items are. And this is where um, you're going to see me throw it to um, uh, Ludwig a lot more on this one. Uh, this is something where uh, Ludwig and I work on this one. Ludwig does a lot of the uh, touchy-feely stuff when it comes to SEO as far as our team goes. So there's a lot of details on here uh, where he's, he's maybe able to uh, provide some, some extra detail on this one. Um, but um, speaking of first carnival plant here, um, this one is basically heavily influenced by the font you use, right? And, and which I, I always think is really funny. Um, but it's one of the things where if you've made any decisions to use like a non standard font um, that were, um, you know, it could cause invisible text. It could uh, cause slow font loads. It could be all kinds of different information on this one. Um, and it's really just, you know, the best advice here is to use the standard fonts uh, for this type of information. No need to get overly fancy with your design. Um, you know, just you might as well use what's what's available to everybody on this one. Uh, no need to get overly creative with this type of information unless it's something you feel is, is really, um, you know, direly needed uh, to get your information across in this one. But um, for the most part, you know, uh, yeah, try and keep it, try and keep it basic if you can. I know that can be a little boring, but it's the best way to do it. Um, other ways to kind of fix this on this, this side of things is to re uh, reduce your server response time. Uh, there's a multitude of ways to actually do this one. Sometimes it has to do with your hosting. Uh, sometimes it has to do uh, with other factors that uh, have to do things. Um, you can actually use a, uh, a CDN on this one. And uh, literally I wanted to, you know, if you could take a minute and kind of share this, this content, uh, the concept of the CDN a little bit busy and not everybody may be um, aware of, the, of this as a, um, a function in the world, the CDN. Sure, um, I'll also ask, answer Arya's question in between. So uh, a CDN content delivery network is basically used when you wanna spread out your different files like photos, downloadable files, uh, uh, elements, JavaScript or different type elements of your website or portions of your website across different servers. Uh, basically, what it allows to do when somebody is accessing the website, it allows to connect to multiple locations at the same time and speed up the loading. Um, today, my, I'm sure a lot of people know about Cloudflare, which is one of the most popular ones, and it's a free one uh, that could be utilized as a CDN um, or could even ut be utilized for caching some of the elements of the website. Um, 
I think that's it in general. And uh, to refer to Arya's question about standard fonts. So standard fonts, the ones, those are the ones that are in your system by default. So Windows and Mac, they have their own versions of fonts like Arial or uh, Verdana or Trebuchet or whatever, uh, sans serif fonts, etc. So you could utilize some of those standard ones, but also a lot of websites today use uh, Google fonts or more custom fonts on the pages. And you can't force those fonts to install on a computer from the website. Um, so people use a CDN, um, for example, Google font CDN and load the fonts from there. But if it's not used properly, like proper tags aren't used, that can slow down the website loading because it's trying to download different versions of the font to show the pages. Um, if, if I hope I answered it. So let me know if you have additional questions on this area. Sounds good. I think that was pretty in depth. So uh, some of the other things you can do on this one, uh, remove or reduce the uh, above the fold script based elements too. And, and this is something um, that your uh, web dev team would, would honestly have to get involved on, uh, on this front. Otherwise it, it uh, could be a little dangerous to just start pulling things down or moving it. Um, there's uh, what's known as prefetching um, certain elements that you're sure will be used in the future. Um, this again is a um, kind of a back end uh, type of activity that you can use. Um, the big one, obviously, is avoiding multiple redirects. Uh, redirects, like you probably heard things like the 301 redirect, the 302 redirect. Um, there's also different. Um, um, HTML based redirects that um, you really shouldn't be using anyway, uh, but if they are in place, uh, this type of thing slows things down. Um, multiple redirects in general uh, can kind of slow things down and, and uh, are also known as a redirect train, uh, redirect uh, chain, and that can actually um, goof up things on multiple fronts. So if you ever see us highlight that fact to fix it, we really do mean it. Go out and fix that one amazing. It's, it's something that uh, it's a bad user experience, but Google doesn't like it much either. And then the last one I wanted to give over to uh, back at Ludwig as well is, is this concept of deferring the non-critical resources. And if you could give us a better idea of like what you would consider to be non-critical, Ludwig, that would be fantastic. Um, so with any website, there are a lot of code that's loading in the background from advertising codes to tracking codes to functional codes. Like let's say you have a form on the website, there is JavaScript that needs to validate that form. Uh, you have advertising on the page that all that grabs the content from a third party. Um, you have tracking, whether it's uh, for like a crazy egg tracking or Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, whatever you're using. So all, all of these um, scripts uh, influence the loading of the page. Um, some of those scripts could be uh, moved towards the bottom of the page, which visually doesn't change anything for the user, but how the browser interprets the code um, it helps speed up the loading of the pages. So deferring is also um, telling the browser, okay, for this portion of the code, you don't have to wait for it to present it to the user. So you can go ahead and show the, the contents of the page to the user without uh, waiting for, I don't know, Google Analytics to load or uh, without waiting for this JavaScript validator to load. Uh, sometimes you can defer it. Sometimes you can use a, a like a CDN, which also speeds up slightly. Um, sometimes you can move it to the bottom of the of the page, and sometimes you also have code that's used on other pages, but it's being pulled on each and every page of the website. So making sure that that the programmers split that that code into different portions and load them on uh, upon necessity rather than on all pages of the website would actually uh, help improve the, the loading speeds. Let's say if you don't have a form on the page, you don't need that JavaScript validation on that page either. Um, so it could be excluded and it doesn't have to put additional stress on the browser when downloading those different elements. Right. Yeah, the, the form one's a big one, by the way. We, we've called people out on that all the time when they're looking to update things. A lot of times you've got um, very common uh, information that's in like the header of every page, and it's just because they felt it was going to be something where, oh, this will be useful. We might as well leave all this code here. Why not You know, do this kind of stuff? And in the end of it, it just adds to uh, load time, and especially if the first contour paint. So uh, make sure you pay attention to that one. 
Um, big note on this one, uh, you know, focusing on this one on the first carnival paint to it. Um, you know, obviously you saw that there were other types of paints that are metrics that are showing up as well. So usually if you do it um, first in this instance, uh, you're going to fix it for a variety of different things down the road. And, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why we highlight this one first, because it is um, kind of a gold mine of ways to make your site faster in general, but just to make that user experience better. All right. So um, speed index we've we've talked about before. Um, it's one of the things where uh, you know a lot of people argue this is one of the most important um, out of all of these different metrics that we're looking at these days. Um, is basically you want to get the text and images on screen as fast as possible for your user. Um, you can uh, you know it's one of the things where I always kind of bring this up when it comes to speed in general. This is one of those those really important ones where um, now Google has us doing this as an SEO ranking signal and it has for some time to it. Uh, but if you think about it, it's something where you kind of should be doing this anyway, uh, because like a really slow experience is a terrible experience for your users. Um, it's something where uh, there's been multiple studies and we can send you a few of them if you ever need a good reason to uh, get your company to invest in, in fixing this one is that, um, you know, fixing uh, the, the page load speed on here will um, do things like improve your conversion rate. Um, substantially. I mean, like it's one of the things where they, they've, they've got it down to the second where like every second that you improve that your conversion rate goes up by a percentage point. I mean, it's, it's that tied uh, to the success of things. Uh, you know, you'll see it. Um, you know, you may have even seen it when Duff and I are in the early pitch stages of getting you as a client these days. Uh, sometimes we'll bring that up uh, during that stage to basically say, hey, look, this is going to become a problem later on. If you really want to improve things, uh, we would suggest that you make your web page a lot faster. So uh, there's a reason to it. So, um, you know, a lot of similar things that we've kind of brought up before on this one, reducing your JavaScript execution time is a big one. This is something where um, it just takes work. Uh, there's some coding things that need to be cleaned up. Uh, sometimes it's just sloppy old code that, that you know, should have been cleaned up uh, during development, but never did. Um, there's another way, what's known as lazy loading um, of a lot of JavaScript uh, that can be kind of deferred later, whatever it is. Uh, uh, Ludwig kind of brought up some versions of this before in the first Carnival Paint. Um, a lot of the third-party scripts um, that are out there to it. And again, this could be tracking, uh, this could be validation, this could be a lot of different things that are out there. Uh, you can actually put those at the bottom of the page so they load last. And this is always a funny one. Like some people just don't think this would make much of a difference that it's like, hey, the, the order of things that get loaded um, you know, on a page is really dependent on the HTML itself and like where these things are. Uh, but in reality, like it does make a difference. It's not something to where like, hey, that code loads all at once and everything kind of executes at once. It is, you know, in reality, a computer language, it means that it starts at the beginning and it goes to the end. And um, it's something that, you know, as old as time when it comes to computer uh, programming, this is the way these types of things work. Um, and so if you put it a little bit later, um, it, it can actually, so, you know, really speed things up to it and make that an experience uh, much, much better for your, for your users. Um, use font display. And uh, this is something, again, I'm going to throw back at, uh, um, at Ludwig on this one to give us a little more color on it. You could uh, you could use like system fonts, standard fonts, or cloud fonts. Um, you could also uh, instruct the computer to inter interpret them differently. Let's say if you're using a cloud font and for whatever reason that server is temporarily unavailable or takes too much time to load, you know you, you, programmers could use um, font swaps, uh, which means you know that font can be swapped in the browser while it's still loading. So the page could display with, let's say, a standard default font that's available in the computer right now. And then once the font is loaded, only after that, it just uh, changes to how it's displayed. Um, that could definitely speed it up because then the, the page doesn't have to wait for the font to fully download uh, to show the results. Great, fantastic. And then the final one on here is uh, this, This and this is another funny concept and not everybody believes this actually makes a big difference, uh, which is the idea of serving the images with sizes that actually make sense for specific design devices, right? So um, you can actually have multiple images kind of in the background to it um, when you're doing this dynamic generation of a page uh, for different types of devices, whether it be mobile or desktop or what have you, whatever it is, um, you can actually have specific images that are designed for this type of stuff rather than doing uh, having the system resize it for you um, in the layout. And that resizing takes up time. Uh, it also is one of the things where um, having those other sizes available um, 
could mean a much slower load time, especially for mobile, right? And, and this is the one, the big one, where if you're on a mobile device, sure, look, the modern Apple phones these days uh, can show an, a 4K image. Doesn't need to necessarily, it needs to happen on, uh, you know, in a web browser, right? Not everybody needs a 4K picture, especially if you're just doing something e-commerce. You know, it's like, unless you're selling fine art pieces or something like that, seriously, roll that back a little bit. It's okay. You know, they're not going to hate you for it. As long as it doesn't look like it's, you know, coming from 1995 or something along those lines, you should be okay. All right, so largest contour paint on this one. I'm not going to get too to much on this because, it, like I said, it's a lot of the same things as the first contour uh, contour paint on this one to it. But again, um, it all comes down to optimizing things like your uh, CSS code, your images, your fonts, your JavaScript, things like that. Um, you know, reducing that, the critical rendering path uh, for certain things. Uh, which you know, uh, Ludwig, if, do you want to give us a little bit of color on the the rendering path one as well? Any page to to have it displayed to the user properly, like the way you have in the design, requires the HTML, CSS images, fonts, and JavaScript to be loaded on the computer um, before it can it can show show how the page looks. Um, so when when you have those um, codes. CSS and JavaScript, for example, um, a lot of times you utilize the same files across multiple pages, which means CSS may contain portions of code that's required for the home page, some other portion that's required for about us page, and then some additional ones that, that's required for contact us page. But when you look at from the user perspective, when, when they're on the home page, they don't need to have the CSS or JavaScript for the about us page because they just need the home page loaded. So optimizing those um, files, you know, the common ones having in one CSS file and then uh, the, the, the more unique uh, design codes having in another CSS file and loading, let's say, two CSS files um, for each page or including them as media elements um, could definitely help with help and improve with the, uh, with the speed and uh, contentful paint of the pages. Great. Um, one of the other things I really wanted to point out too is this idea of upgrading to a better host. So uh, one of the things that's, that's really important um, in the world of SEO is um, every now and then um, it's, a, it's a hardcore myth that um, where you host your website is a ranking signal in and of itself, right? So Google doesn't care like which neighborhood your stuff lives in. It doesn't care, you know, who else is on that server with you uh, when you do these types of things. Um, however, what they do care about is some of the effects that could happen um, by choosing certain hosts, right? So if you end up choosing a really cheap hosting uh, provider up there that, you know, isn't that quick, uh, maybe it just doesn't provide a lot of the, the right types of scripts and things like that to make things load faster, some of the caching, whatever it is that um, that can affect you, right? But again, it's not the host itself that's doing it. So you don't want to necessarily mark about that idea of like, hey, hosting is a ranking signal. It's what that hosting uh, can actually do to your website uh, that makes the big impact here. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, the uh, large page elements is another one. We've kind of talked about that before, whatever it is. And uh, this is always going to interest Interesting one. We uh, we've had multiple instances with clients where um, you know we've we've been running campaigns from forever, you know, paid search campaign, whatever it is, and then um, somebody has gone through and maybe they've they've updated a slider. Um, that's got some images that are flowing by on a regular basis. Uh, maybe it's something where they slid in something new for the holidays. Who knows what it could be? But in, in that instance, maybe they just got, you know, a rush for time. Maybe there was somebody new doing it, whatever it is. Um, but they didn't optimize that image properly. And so what you what was getting loaded was these giant 4K uh, type of files, whatever, that um, were super uh, heavy on the load times or whatever. And I, I, I'm not kidding here. We've seen like uh, campaigns, suddenly their conversion rate starts falling apart, whatever it is. And it's something where we can actually see it um, on all our charts for whatever it is, where things are humming along, great conversion rate, whatever it is, and then boom, and it just falls apart, right? And, and it's one of the first things that we look at um, when we look at some of the diagnostic metrics and why a campaign can start to fall apart. Uh, but you can look at that from you know an overall standpoint as well. If, if your numbers go down or something along those lines, look at conversion rate and then look around the time that that conversion rate took a dive. And there's a very good chance that maybe something was added to your website um, that maybe maybe just made it load uh, much slower in that instance, and it took down everything with it. 
trust me on this. It's, it's happened many times before. It's one of the first things we'll call out. But if, you know, we don't see it first, make sure that uh, it's an early place that you look. Um, and then finally on here is removing unnecessary third-party scripts. Um, again, scripts can just, can uh, they can build up over time. You know, maybe one of those times where, you know, at some point you were trying Hotjar and then you said, oh, it's not for me and I'm going to move over to Crazy Egg and then you just don't bother to take the Hotjar code off your page um, or vice versa, whatever it is. Um, it could be that you had um, a dozen different types of tracking strips that came from different programmatic partners. Um, who knows what it is, right? It's a variety of things that get there, they just get scale. And so every now and then it's just good hygiene um, as, as Ludwig loves to call it, uh, to actually go through and make sure that these things are actually all cleaned up behind the scenes. Um, nothing's just, you know, sitting there dying in the vine, taking up valuable resources, whatever it is. Uh, make that page pop. Um, some of the easy ways to do this is to use Google Tag Manager. And uh, that actually has a lot of very creative ways to allow you to load just what you need to load on any given moment. But it's also a great way to just go through and be able to um, remove them entirely if you don't need them anymore. All right, so uh, time to interactive. Um, and this one, I'm actually gonna let um, uh, Ludwig take this slide entirely into and be like I said, it was, uh, this is one of the more, uh, you know, like interactive and more <laughs> uh, interesting types of ones as well. So I'm gonna let, uh, let sure, Ludwig run down the line. Um, on this so one. just like during the previous slides, you know, we talked about the kind of elements that influence the speed. Time to interactive talks about um, the, the moment when you can start using the website. Um, whether it's clicking, whether it's scrolling, uh, or seeing something for the user after the, the, the initial contentful pane. Um, so uh, the different elements that influence this, this metric are, for example, uh, the JavaScript execution times. Again, if you had a lot of JavaScript that impacts the loading of the website, there is too much to load before the website starts functioning. Um, let's say you can't you can't use the form, you can't click the button because the JavaScript hasn't loaded. Um, this is this is when the user can interact with the page, um, minimizing you know what the computer has to do to make the, the page function for the user. Um, again, let's say you have a gallery, you want to sc scroll the images. Um, the images haven't loaded or the JavaScript haven't hasn't loaded, and you can't scroll them right and left. Um, you probably have seen a lot of e-commerce websites where, where you load the page, uh, one image shows up, but then it takes five, 10 seconds before you can look at the other pictures or you can zoom in uh, for the product to, to see it uh, um, in a bigger resolution. Um, sometimes um, some of the options is also, you know, splitting the code. Like I mentioned, when you have code that's not required on the page, you know, moving it to a separate file would actually um help improve it um th there is a cool trick that i love using is the preload um in in javascript and css and some of those external files that you you, uh, you need on the page um, again it may sound too technical but it's just just one word in the uh in the include element of the javascript that could actually help improve the uh, the loading speed of the page because what it does, it, it simultaneously tries to load multiple files rather than waiting for one file to load and then going to the next one and then the third one, et cetera. Um, minifying JavaScript coding is another good option. Um, it can also improve with the, with the loading speeds, uh, not just a TTI. Um, for example, when, when just like a Word document, you know, when, when you write something, you have a lot of spaces, breaks, a lot of... Uh, different elements that don't necessarily need to be there for a computer to read the code. So minification actually removes all these unnecessary spaces, you know, tabs from the file and compresses the file to as minimal size as possible. And, and then reducing the request counts. So if I go back to the previous item where, where I mentioned, you can split the different uh, portions of the file into multiple files. Now this one is the opposite, it, it, it tells you, you know, you can't have 200 JavaScript files loading on a page or, you know, 300 CSS files to make the page load. So it has to be rational um, how you're splitting the files or how many of them are dependent on each other. So try to make it, um, you know, one max two files per page, um, but they, they're in a way that actually help improve and, you know, help load it faster. Because if you have 200 requests per page, 
on or even a hundred requests per page um, images JavaScript CSS tracking codes etc 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 it's going to take time for the page to load so the, the less you can include uh, the less requests the server the computer the user's computer can make to the server the faster your pages could load um, anything you'd like to add Jeff I think you hit it all. Yeah, this is the one that, uh, like I said, it's the uh, the time to interactive. I thought was always a, uh, you know, it's an interesting thing. I think a lot of people miss out on on the optimization for this one specifically. Um, but you know, if you think about it again, if you're trying to sell something, if you're trying to get somebody to fill out a form, um, those types of things, um, the sooner it's possible, the the you know the, the better it can be for everybody across the board. All right, and so uh, total blocking time, uh, we can actually shoot through this one pretty quick too. It's a lot of the greatest hits from the other side of things. So remove a lot of that unnecessary code. We've talked about that on multiple fronts of this thing. Uh, load that third-party code as quickly as possible. Uh, there's a myriad of different ways to actually make that possible. And uh, optimize and refactor all that, that kind of slow coding and things that are out there. Uh, Ludwig covered a lot of that on this last one. But again, as you can see, you know, as you start working through these things, um, you know, one thing will begat another, will begat another, will begat another, and it, and it's it's something where it all kind of comes together. So just attacking all of these things at once usually will just improve things across the board. There's most likely a lot of low hanging fruit uh, that you can tack as you work on these things, and um, it won't necessarily take up a bunch of uh, time for your developers and things like that. Uh, this does give me the moment to actually bring up the fact: uh, if you don't have the resources available to make these type of changes on your own. Uh, uh, we do. Uh, we actually have those type of resources available and we can partner uh, with you uh, to provide this type of information, uh, this type of services uh, going forward. So if you ever need anything like that, just give us a hand raise. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Duff, um, and we're happy to kind of make that connection for you, uh, let you know pricing and all that good kind of stuff. All right. And uh, the final one in here, the community layout shift, my, uh, my, the slimiest thing as far as I'm concerned. This is the thing I, I can't stand the most, as I mentioned before. Um, it's when the page just kind of shifts around while you're trying to read it. Uh, I mean, that's that's the thing that you really have to think about is, is if you're a designer and you've got this type of experience that's being created for the content that you're putting out there. I mean, that's, that's your purpose in life is to put content out there so people can read it. Um, it's what brings them back again. Um, it's one of the things where it makes it enjoyable. It makes them maybe take the next step if you're like e-commerce or something along those lines. Like these are the type of things that you don't want to drive people crazy on. Um, but oddly enough, it gets forgotten. And I see this shifting happen constantly when it comes down to it. Um, so one, just one, make sure it isn't happening at all, right? Like, I mean, you're, you know, a good way to find out whether it is happening is that we have this great metric that'll show you how often this type of things happen. But um, for goodness sakes, just please take a look at your own pages after you publish them and make sure this isn't dancing around. Try it on your mobile devices. These are just classic standard things that should happen. Um, and as a bonus, it'll help you uh, with your um, organic ranking as well. Um, so again, uh, a lot of the same elements as, as we talked about before, um, you know, there, for a lot of these things as well. But again, the big takeaway from this one is just make sure that that things aren't shifting around on you. And if it is, redesign that page. That's not the way things are supposed to work. All right, so um, we're coming down to the home stretch here, and um, one of the big things I, I wanted to make sure that we we share in this one is uh, uh, is the worry scale. We like to do this one as well on uh, a lot of functions because you just never know how important this type of thing is. Um, it's uh, it's one of things where in this case we want to we're going to give it a, a solid seven on this one. It's certainly not a ten. You don't need to overly panic about this thing. You don't need to drop everything to do it, but. It's something that we feel is very important on multiple fronts. As I said, it's it's become a ranking signal now um, for it, but even before it was a ranking signal, it was important before, right? And and this is always our our big thing when it comes to a lot of SEO is that a lot of the things that are that are accounted as SEO uh, things these days, whether or not be being mobile friendly or that the page speed uh, loads quickly or the interaction time is fast, um, a bunch of other stuff. You should be doing it anyway, because that's what being a website owner is about, right? You want this this fantastic experience um, for your users uh, so that they enjoy the experience, they buy your products, they fill out that form, whatever it is kind of stuff to it. And I know it's tough. I know it's a lot of work. Sometimes it's, you're just happy that the thing loaded at all and it looks pretty, <laughs> but you know, there's, there's a lot more to it uh, than that. So make sure you actually um, pay attention to those types of things. So we're going to put this as a, as a solid seven on this one uh, moving forward. 
Um, that said, one note we did kind of want to bring up on this one is that um, it is part of many things that Google uses to rank your website, right? It's one of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different ranking signals that Google loses that determine things, right? Um, we did get a confirmation from Google the other day that it's not a matter of those things where like, it, it's not like a tiebreaker uh, when it comes down to it. So it's one of the things where like, if you've got two pieces of content that are just as relevant as another, uh, when it comes to authority or content or any of that kind of stuff, and you know, which one's faster, we're going to put that one first. It doesn't necessarily work that way. Uh, just because there's so many different ranking signals that that possibility really doesn't happen, uh, believe it or not. However, that said, um, the big picture thing that I always remind people, and if you've, if you've heard me speak on SEO before, um, if you've been one of our clients for a certain amount of times, is that uh, Google has many ranking signals and it's all these different types of algorithms they use to kind of determine what's going on to it. And it's and it, it basically gives each one of those ranking signals a score. And that score is between zero and one. So it's a fractional number that they do to it. And the big thing to re remember here is that Google doesn't add up those scores. It multiplies them, all right? So what happens is if you multiply a number that's really low on this one, it drags down everything else. So it's one of the things where you may be doing a fantastic job on your content. Um, you know, it's one of the things where you may have put all the effort in to get all those inbound links to it. Uh, but if your website design stinks, right, it's gonna drag everything back and uh, it's gonna deprive the world of all that work you did everywhere else. So um, it's one of the things where, you know, we get asked all the times, you know, like, hey, look, what's the most important thing? What's this, whatever it is? Um, it, the answer is it's all the things, right? <laughs> so you need to do it. And I know that can be overwhelming. I know there's a lot of things you have to pay attention to to, and sometimes the best approach is to hit this lo lowest hanging fruit. Uh, but that said, don't ignore certain things, maybe because, you know, it's like, oh, we just don't have the resources, we can't get to whatever it is. There's, there's ways to solve those things. Um, you know, if you don't have the resources, come to us, we can help make it happen. Um, this is just a, a quote, basically saying what I said that showed up in a, uh, another article that, uh, that I appeared in on this, on this front, uh, that's out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, some big final thoughts on this one. Um, you know, like I said, it's now combined with other user experience signals, uh, such as safe browsing and uh, security and mobile friendliness and things like that. Um, so it's one of the things where if you implement these things right now, uh, you're going to help things across the board, right? It's just going to make everything go up, not just your organic search. Uh, you're going to, you're going to get love from all the directions, excluding your users, which is the big one. All right. Um, SEO is one of those evolving kind of things with multiple parts, um, you know, to go well beyond core web vitals, uh, user experience, even if it wasn't an integral part of core web vitals, uh, is one of those websites you should always be trying to improve anyway. So, you know, even if it's getting a certain point, you know, keep working on this thing to it. Um, that said, I always got to point out, don't drive yourself crazy either. You know, it's one of the things where, um, you know, trying to get this thing as close to zero might drive your, you know, really kind of drive you nuts. Uh, we've had people before when we've talked to them where uh, they look at our website and basically said like, you know, so are you kidding? You know, this, this you know, load speed of this or this kind of you know, content paint score for this, whatever it is, you must be joking. I thought you guys were experts. And it's really just because again, you get to a certain point where you can't push it any further without actually destroying and everything else. The idea is just to get it uh, the best it can be, right? And uh, optimizing for all these different signals uh, among other metrics that are out there, it's a good place to start. Um, it's a good way to do it. Like I said, there's there's multiple ways you can actually find these scores. Uh, a lot of these tools out there will specifically tell you uh, what's slowing these things down, like those the, the report generation, especially the ones that are built into Chrome, will come back and say, hey, look, it's this causing it, right? It's, you know, it's like this image is doing this. It's um, this code that's causing this kind of problem. Or business. So um, there's tools out there that will tell you. So it, it takes away a lot of the mystery. It just, it basically boils down to the idea of like, hey, look, do you have the technical resources to fix this thing? And uh, one last piece of advice I always like to share on these things is that um, a lot of times within an organization, if you're trying to get things um, from an SEO perspective fixed, um, you'll run into a wall, right? They'll, they'll come back and they'll say like, look, we don't have the resources for it. Uh, you know, the, your, your goofy SEO religion doesn't make any sense to us. Who knows what it is, right? But in the end, if you approach it from the idea that, hey, look, this is a user experience issue. And it's something that is universal, that it, that actually is going to fix uh, everything across the board. Um, then usually the, the pocketbooks open up, uh, the resources become available, uh, and it's the best way to do it. Because this is just an integral part of your marketing program. And for a lot of you, it's an integral part of how your company makes money now. So. 
Um, so with that, uh, we're going to say thank you on this one, but we're going to hang out and we'll do a Q and a, we've actually got about eight and a half minutes left over here. Um, so if you want to, uh, pop us any questions in that chat window, feel free to do so. Um, this isn't one of those systems where we can actually turn on mics quite easily on this one. So, uh, feel free to do it that way. Um, if you get a moment, make sure you answer our little poll question there, just so we've got a, a good understanding of, uh, where you're at, um, in your organization as well. Um, and so we can get a better idea of whether or not this was the uh, the hot topic we thought it was as well. But uh, yeah, I got set. Uh, Duff, Ludwig, anything else to add on, on this information? I would just say, you know, on behalf of all of us here at Amplitude, just appreciate your joining us. Uh, we will be sharing this presentation um, and just feel free to get back in touch. We're always, of course, available to answer questions. And I just hope everybody has an amazing week. Absolutely. No, I admit. Give this picture of our old office. I miss seeing it all together like that. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> all right. right. Well, I'm not seeing the chat window light up so much. So I think we're um, we're good for today. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out um, over email, um, over all the different ways you know you can find us. Um, reply once we send this out. Um, feel free to fire away. Uh, and again, if you need any help, um, you know, with resources, things like that. Uh, we have those things available for you today. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Spots, and everybody have a great week.